Now, obviously, the the big uh, major story this week is same-sex marriage is now law in Australia. The House of Representatives passed the Dean Smith same-sex marriage bill uh, unamended. All efforts to protect uh, religious freedoms in the form of amendments were defeated. Uh, in the final vote, there was only four MPs who uh, voted no. There were, uh, f- from the current estimation, 12 abstentions. So mm-hmm. it, same-sex marriage it became legal on December 9 after uh, receiving royal assent the, the previous day. Now, overseas, same-sex marriages are now instantly recognised and uh, same-sex couples have started giving their 30 days notice to uh, wed. And the lo- looking at the laws, laws in specifics, uh, marriage is now the union of uh, two people and the term uh, spouse can be used instead of husband or wife. And uh, gender on birth certificates can now be uh, changed without the need for a heterosexual couple to uh, divorce. Yes. Um, now, um, when, when it comes to, uh, obviously, like you stated about uh, the 30 days notice, so the 9th of January is going to be uh, the official day where people can start getting married um, under same-sex marriages. Um, the spouse issue is an interesting one because it does raise um, gender fluidity uh, uh, issues. Um, I mean, instead of using uh, two men, two women, man and woman, if you use the word spouse, it, it automatically cancels the male and female out of the, the actual uh, contract. So um, it's already using a neutral term. So that could be a, a further sort of, how can I say, uh, pushing of their agenda going down that way to try and minimise the, the male and female usage of words. And... Obviously, there's a lot of um, uh, other things at stake. Now, um, the four people that voted against uh, the the same-sex marriage in Parliament House was Keith Pitt, Russell Broadbent, Bob Catter and David Littleproud. Now, those four people are only four people because there was many other uh, abstains, 12 abstains that you mentioned, and... A lot of those guys that abstained were, were seen as conservative, fierce warriors. You had people like Tony Abbott, uh, George Christensen, and also um, uh, the young Western Australian. Um, Andrew also, Hastie. Um, yeah, Andrew Hastie, that's the one. And, and I mean, these guys here are, are really seen as like voices and, and, and there were the big no campaign um, campaigners that, uh, that really went out there and uh, put their voice out there. But um, I, I think there's, there's a bit of a feeling, especially amongst the no campaign, that these guys uh, are a bit gutless, really, to, to not at least uh, put their say and, and vote no and instead abstain, because even though there's the argument to be made that uh, a lot of their electorates voted uh, as a yes vote, um, they still could have really stood firm and, and held on to th- their convictions. And I think people would have really appreciated it. And the four people that did hold their uh, their views and, and make sure that they voted, no, I don't think will be affected at the following election because by then people would have forgotten about um, uh, the whole issue altogether. There would be other issues on the plate. So I, I think they could have... Uh, stepped out and, and, and chose to vote no rather than abstained. Well, yeah, the reason they chose to abstain, I think, is because their electorates uh, voted yes, and so they, they they didn't feel that they could vote against their electorates. Uh, but mm. there, there was... There, Andrew Hastie said that he was going to vote no to um, same-sex marriage, uh, period. Uh, I think mm. there would have been a few other people in the abstentions who... Uh, weren't uh, comfortable with the uh, same-sex marriage bill in its final form, given that uh, all the amendments to to protect religious freedoms had been defeated. Uh, probably mm. Tony Abbott would have uh, voted yes if some of those amendments had passed, and maybe uh, Michael Suker and a few others. But because it was, mm. you know, pr- uh, pretty much the uh, you know, minimalist. Uh, uh, change uh, to to the Marriage Act, uh, they felt that they couldn't support that. But then again, they didn't want to go against their electorates. Yeah, um, in, in regards to George Christensen, he was one person that uh, definitely 
stood up and said uh, to the gallery, the, the, the people in the gallery that were cheering on uh, the yes side, that, that were really cheering on a destruction of religious freedoms. And Bob Catter's speech, another one, was really um, passionate uh, about his views and, and uh, basically he said that when people uh, were to come out of the city and into the bush where real people were in the pub, that uh, they had very different views um, to ones in the, in the inner city. So um, the, the argument to be made really is uh, how about the Labor MPs that chose to vote yes, even though they had a, a 70% uh, no vote in their electorates. I mean, I think those guys there might have a harder time to retain their seats than the ones uh, in the yes areas, especially since the yes vote won, uh, meaning that uh, the, the people in the no voting areas uh, might be um, a little bit uh, peed off I guess you could say at the next election, and might and might be able to uh, vote otherwise because these are, are very strong Labor seats. But when it came to this issue, uh, the working class um, ethnic communities are really um, against this, and the Labor Party uh, people in there aren't really representing their seats. Yeah, it'll be interesting in yeah, next election whether whether there is any uh, backlash. Uh, uh, to, to their decisions, especially in uh, J uh, Jason Clare, who's in Blacksland, his seat was 75% uh, no. So certainly, uh, yes, those uh, MPs, they have, still have the entitlement to vote the way they want, but uh, time will tell, um, you know, whether they're held, you know, accountable for uh, going against their constituents like that. They'd probably argue that uh, Australia as a whole uh, said yes, and so um, you know they they did the uh, the right thing by uh, the majority of people. But yeah, uh, then mm. again, that's uh, uh, that's disputable. Other people will disagree with that. Well, time will definitely tell. I think. I mean, um, it, it's just su that was such a big vote, really, and it was all concentrated mainly in Western Sydney. And um, I think it really has broken the stereotype that. Uh, poor people tend to be um, progressive and rich people tend to be conservative. I think that's really breaking stereotypes here because really when you look down to it, apart from the Liberal and Labor voting records of these seats, the upper class areas were very, very strong yes votes. When you had uh, Tony Abbott's electorate in the 70 plus mark um, and then ones in uh, such as Malcolm Turnbull's electorate, um, the, the Sydney and Grainless seats uh, in Sydney, those areas there were all in, in the 80% mark of a yes vote. Uh, but then when you go into Western Sydney, which are labour areas, it's totally the opposite. So I think um, people are confused because they, they tend to um, really base their votes on economic issues rather than the social ones. But I think a vote like uh, the same-sex marriage one really has opened people's eyes and thought, OK, um, is this party really uh, representing who I am as a person? And... Um, not only basing it on one issue um, of economics, but a, a range of different issues, whether it be um, social issues, immigration issues. Um, it just seems to me that um, the the idea or the stereotype that we grow up with, that uh, the, the rich are conservative and the, the poor are, are very progressive, um, seem to be very, um, yeah, it just doesn't seem to be a reality. But back to same-sex marriage. Now, there's been a lot of talk about you know, what's, what's next on the, the left's agenda, because uh, they obviously feel, although the, you know, same-sex marriage movement wasn't made up entirely of uh, uh, left-wing people, uh, the left certainly claimed it as a victory of their own, and they obviously feel, you know, empowered by their, uh, uh, what they see as their victory. Now, it was interesting, in, in the 24 hours immediately, there was an article published saying that, well, they they didn't use the term safe schools, but they said uh, they said uh, LGBTQ. Uh, how many of uh, uh, extra letters there are now? Inclusive uh, education, which is, uh, and they didn't. Uh, yeah, this was done by an uh, an academic who. Uh, it wasn't. They didn't just want a you know anti bullying program. They wanted you know like gay sex education. Uh, and if you mm. read that article, it talks about you know, the ch uh, children, they should learn about, you know, uh, sexual pleasure. Like it's, like, it's pretty blatant in that's what they want. And they obviously felt that now was the time to promote this. Yes, yes. I, I did see that article. And um, a lot of people have, 
posted that article on saying, oh, it's only been a day and they, they, they got stuck right into it. They didn't even give it a, uh, a bit of a rest break. Um, but, I mean, this, this was something that was bound to happen because it, all the dominoes are falling um, eventually. And you might be able to, um, in, in theory, support same-sex marriage, but then a lot of people, when you look at things that are, are bound to happen uh, later on, then it, it, it might give people a, a bit of a different opinion or thought. And even though they did win quite strongly, um, now a lot of people are going to have to face these consequences um, that they may not have known about or um, that at the time they didn't believe were going to happen. And... I mean, one step that's definitely going to happen soon, I would say, is um, to uh, include uh, polyamorous relationships in marriages. I think that's uh, something that's inevitable. Um, and I actually uh, see a lot of support on the internet for that. Um, whether people believe in it or not, it's up to them. But um, there is a lot of uh, people in groups and, and everything that um, say um, basically that if you have um, two men or two women marrying, that um, as long as it's consent, um, that, you know, anyone can marry. If you want to marry, you know, five people, ten people, it wouldn't matter as long as it's consenting adults. So using that argument, I mean, it seems to me that polyamorous relationships um, soon enough will uh, be incorporated. I don't know if it's going to take five years, ten years, but I don't think it would be... Um, any more than a decade and we would have it in there for sure. Um, anything else after that, uh, it, it would take longer to, um, I mean, there's, there's the argument that you could uh, have bestiality and um, and things like uh, people marrying objects and, and all, all that sort of thing, you know, down the line, maybe marrying robots, you know, you, you just wouldn't know. But um, polyamorous relationships definitely is going to be something that happens quite soon, I think. Uh, I, I think, you know, you know, bestiality, like marrying objects. I, I, I don't think that's ever going to happen, uh, ever. Mm. Like certainly there'll be, you know, discussions about, uh, polyamory, but I think it's mm. something that the political class won't go near, uh, basically mm. because of the fact that they can't be certain that, uh, polyamorous marriages given like it, uh, how they operate in Islam, for example, uh, there's no yeah. way that the politicians could be, uh, convinced that, you know, these types of marriages would be uh, consensual. Mm, that, that's, that's, that's definitely right. I, I just, um, I mean, these are things that could possibly happen, but it takes generations for these things to come into place. I mean, if you look back 50 years, what we've had 50 years ago to now, a lot has changed, a very big lot of things have changed, and nobody would have thought anything of it back then. Um, so it, it's very difficult to rule out. I mean, Polyamorous definitely is, is going to be within a decade there. I, I, don't, I don't doubt it. I, I know that there is, as you said, some pressure amongst people that might think there might be consensual issues, especially amongst some uh, particular groups of people. But I think it's something that will uh, end up um, getting incorporated. There's already ABC articles on uh, polyamorous relationships and they are starting to promote it a little bit as a next kind of, because with the left, they have to find, find something else now to, to focus on. So they've already had SS granted, so they'll, they'll find other things to, because this is the definition of progressivism. When you're a progressive person, you, you want continual change, so you're going to have to latch onto new objectives, to uh, new social justice things that, um, you know, have to be incorporated into laws um, to change for the sake of change. Um, so it's definitely, um, you know, it's very hard to rule out, really, because, you know, 50 years ago, people would have ruled out anything happening here that we, we've currently had. Um, when it comes to the actual campaign, I know, I know we have to sort of, um, what, where do we go from here, you know, and, and how, how, how should no voters really react to, to how the campaign's gone? And it, it's, it's very hard to pinpoint. I mean, the, the campaign on the no side was very sensible and professional, almost a little bit too much. The, the yes side really, I mean, it was a disastrous, I would say it was disastrous and it was really feral, but they ended up winning, see, because when you look at votes or uh, elections, nobody wins when they go on positive platforms. Now, it might be the ethical thing to do, but 
people like dirty politics. I mean, they, you know, they'll, they'll say, oh, you know, we don't like our politicians talking dirty and stuff. But as soon as the dirty advertisement comes out, the slanderous and, you know, the, the, the negative advertising, that's what wins it. And the, the left were good at that. You know, they were going out there, you know, smashing billboards, you know, abusing people. And we all thought that that was going to work against them, but it didn't. And I, I don't know. I mean, if the if the no campaign did the same thing, the media would have attacked them hard for it. But would it have maybe improved their vote? It's just it's just very hard to say. I, I just think they were too polished and and just too sensible for their own good in a way. You know. Uh, I I certainly feel that the the, the campaign itself, uh, the the opinion polls didn't really change uh, through, mm. uh, throughout the. Uh, the campaign. I mean, it was always roughly about you know sixty forty. The the yes campaign certainly went off the rails. Uh, you know, uh, early on. Um, you know, with you know the uh, their left fringe uh, being pretty feral. But I did notice mm. in the in the final month or so that they, they actually believe it or not the the left actually learned how to behave. Like they didn't. You know, <laughs> whenever they saw a no campaign, uh, you know, uh, get uh, get, uh, get triggered which was you know I, I i was you know quite impressed by which you know probably um you know sa- saved them uh in those uh final weeks uh, but mm-hmm. uh, given that uh the the no campaign it was basically about issues such as you know safe schools and uh religious uh freedoms and it was mm-hmm. and the reason why you know i voted yes and i think that uh you know uh, a lot of other people voted yes is because they, you know, just looked at the issue of itself, which was should the law be changed to allow, you know, same-sex couples to marry. I mean, a lot of people who voted yes, you know, would be concerned about, you know, religious freedom and safe schools. Mm. I, I didn't like the no campaign saying they were, a, you know, packaged deal because I, I don't think it's inevitable that, uh, you know, they, uh, these things... Uh, you know, uh, more safe schools and the destruction of religious freedom is inevitable. They can they can still be fought, and I hope that mm. the the government's inquiry into religious freedoms, which will report you know March next year, like it just doesn't you know get um you know chucked on a shelf somewhere. I I hope there there is some yeah. you know a- action from it, and I I still think that uh, you know the a lot of you know parents are uncomfortable with. You know, uh, safe schools, and I actually saw a story today that uh, Labor power brokers are actually wanting to tell Daniel Andrews to shut up about safe schools. Ah, that's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I, I just uh, I'm very skeptical on it because uh, I just know how they work, and I what my opinion on on, on it was. I okay, we'll shelve it to next year. And by next year, everybody will forget about it and we'll just sort of, you know, bring up other issues. And, I mean, you don't know what's going to happen. If if Turnbull's really um, going really badly, they, and, and just say the, the citizen, uh, citizenship issue, there could be something that triggers an election. Say Shorten becomes Prime Minister next year, um, that would just scrap the whole religious issues altogether and uh, he wouldn't touch it and it will all be forgotten about. And that, that's, that's the sort of... Uh, the thing that we have to be careful on that because they didn't sort it out um, in December when they were putting uh, same sex marriage into parliament and they chose to do it separately, that uh, it could be later forgotten about and just um, altogether just left out of it, you know? Well, while we've got a you know coalition government, we can you know have mm. hope. But given that Labor MP is there, they weren't bound, uh, bound for the actual same sex marriage vote, but they were to vote down all the amendments, which was uh, pretty disgraceful. You definitely know that mm-hmm. under Labor that, you know, religious freedom is going to be trashed. And, you know, Bill Shorten in the last election, you know, said he wanted an LGBT commissioner and the, the Human Rights Commission. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Uh, uh, where, where do you think personally um, that the, the, the No campaign can learn from this uh, given other camp, do you think that uh, the the answer is to go a little bit more harder? Because, like I was saying before, they might have been a little bit too PC um, in their advertising. They they did mention safe schools and um, and issues like that, but they they still they they could have went further. They didn't have the the very emotive advertising. They didn't have the sort of um, the the real sort of scary sort of you know mention of pedophilia or anything like that. I mean. 
that of course you know people could say that's bizarre to bring it up but it's it's things that they could have used to uh encourage people to sway their way you know like scaremongering tactics and they were really sensible in not bringing up things like that but would it have maybe um brought more people to their side of thinking uh by being more emotive more negative more um a little bit more uh extreme i i felt that you know because all of the advertising was about you know, sa uh, safe schools that they'd already mm. conceded that the Australian people were okay with uh, same-sex marriage, which uh, when, when you concede that, you know, the issue that the the vote is about is, uh, you know, okay, then you're already, um, you, you're, you're already behind. And so, uh, every, uh, which uh, given, given that strategy, uh, it's not a surprise that the, the vote was the, the result uh, that it was. Um, but I also think that the no campaign, they shouldn't have, like, they, they shouldn't feel that, you know, everything, uh, you know, uh, they, uh, they put every, everything on the table on uh, this vote. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's not the, the end of everything. I mean, you know, uh, a, a same-sex wedding, you know, by, by itself, like, is, you know, is not, is not the end for, you know, all these other issues. There's still, you know, uh, a lot of uh, issues that no, uh, no campaigners, you know, are, you know, passionate about that they can still, you know, c uh, convince the public. I don't think this, you know, was the, um, you know, winner takes all uh, vote. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.